Hello. Hello. Welcome to my theater of the flat imagination. Um, it's really wonderful to be here with you all. It's an honor. Thank you for uh, choosing to spend this time with us. Um, and I'm so glad that Dan and Riley are here. Um, uh, I'm stoked. I'm going to say more nice things about you uh, in a little bit. Uh, I will. I'm sorry. Um, but for now, I'm going to turn these lights on so I can read what is written on this paper. Uh, and I'd like to share a new piece with you. Um, this piece is dedicated to a friend of mine's and of Riley's and Dan's. Um, it's for Jonathan, and it's called Carve. Mm. 
Very small cuts, nothing, nothing at all. I thought of more knives with the knives to get. And those knives weren't that that cartridges. And I saw this. And I thought of more knives with the knives to get. Those knives weren't that that cartridges. And I saw this and I thought of my friend Alex Dickey. Uh, four quarter. This morning I woke up to a message from a friend containing an image of a two by four growing up out of the ground like a tree in the middle of a field. The two by four was tinted a slightly unreal shade of green like the treated lumber we used to haul around at the Menards where I once worked. The image was captioned, look at this. This was followed by a second message, which said, an AI made this. I was uncertain about how to respond to this message. I found myself thinking about Kierkegaard's concluding unscientific postscript to the philosophical fragments, which I seemed to recall said something about how in the face of advances in technology, like the railroad and the telegraph, making life easier and easier, the only task left to humans was to make life harder. And I wondered whether, in the face of this technology, making it easier and easier to generate falsehoods in a uniform and more or less convincing style, the only task left to humans was to tell each other the truth in idiosyncratic and unconvincing ways.
if I were to get close. I asked him if I were to get months ago, I was working as an editor at a nonprofit organization in the medical sector where I had been employed for several years, and I decided that I would tell my boss the truth. This resulted in my departure from the job. The same day, I was invited to create an installation piece for an academic conference in a small post-industrial city in Sweden. A friend from the internet had recommended my work to the conference organizer, and she had felt it would be of interest to the conference participants, academics studying the representation of data as sound. I accepted the invitation, and shortly thereafter found myself in Stockholm, ordering a coffee from a barista who sounded like he was from Wisconsin. I took a train to meet my friend from the internet, in the small post-industrial city. We hugged and expressed our shared amazement at meeting one another in person for the first time. Website of the knife store, website of the knife store, those knives were out. 
that that was more than I was in stock. I was looking at the left side of the knives. Those knives weren't that valid for the store that I that I was in stock. That's very small. I was looking at those knives. Knives. Those that were sold to store that that were sold. I store that I was in I looking at the website of knife store. I am looking at the website of knife. Those knives weren't that I was in stock. That were sold to store that I wanted. And I messaged. So I was looking at the website of knife. Those knives weren't that 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 I was in stock. I store that very small cups. I messaged. Those knives weren't was. That at that website, the knife store that I those knives I worked was that looking at the website or the knife store and I messaged. I was looking at the website of the knife store and I saw that wanted they were selling knives. Winding streets crisscrossing the river that ran through the middle of the town. I told him more about my life than I had initially planned to, and then felt a little embarrassed about having shared so much. He told me about how much he liked guilty pleasure music, and cited as an example of this the band Electric Six, whom he liked a lot. Their whole catalog. Not just danger, high voltage, and gay bar. The street seemed designed to cross the river as many times as possible, in as many ways as possible. It was impossible to get from any one point in the town to any other without crossing the river several times. My friend expressed his gratitude at having gotten to know me better. It occurred to me that my sharing might not have been inappropriate, and that this might, in fact, be the normal way in which friendships happen. If I were to get some knives for myself, which I have a knife in my other hand, that a uh, knife in my other hand, that uh, then I messaged. Uh, I was looking at the website of the knives. Those knives weren't that that were sold at the store that I. Uh, 
got together and took her husband's. We got together and took her husband's. We got together and then I messaged Alex and I said that I was in Stockholm and was curious if he wanted uh, very small cuts, nothing, nothing at all. Those knives weren't that that were sold at the store that I found. And I messaged Alex and I said that I was in Stockholm and was curious if he wanted uh, very small cuts, nothing, nothing at all. Those knives weren't that that were sold at the store that I found. And I messaged Alex and I said that I was in Stockholm and was curious if he wanted. Um, or need. The thing about carving a life is that with each stroke of the blade, there's a little less there. That night, I called Riley on the phone. She said, I don't think you have anything to worry about. And I said,